again, Kingston Town Administrator Keith Hickey with the latest edition of Kingston In-Depth for the month of October 2022. With me today is Kingston's Town Planner, Valerie Massard, who I consider one of the best planners in this Commonwealth. Uh, she's got a work cut out for her, certainly over the next few months with all, everything going on. I uh, thought it was really timely to have Valerie come in and talk more about some of the developments that are being discussed very preliminarily right now in Kingston. I mentioned them last month in a TV show that I had taped and uh, got a, a decent amount of feedback from uh, some of the people who were watching. So I thought it would be appropriate to have Valerie come in, maybe try to spend a little bit more time on the subject so people know what's happening and, uh, and hopefully want to get involved potentially. So Valerie, thanks for right. coming in. Really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the high praise. So, you're welcome. Kind of you. Um, so we've got, as I mentioned before, we've got a number of different projects going on. I was hoping that maybe to spend... Um, you know, just a few minutes on each one of them and, you know, where they stand in the process right now, uh, what type of projects they are, where the locations may be, and uh, if people want to make comments, how to best do that. So, so with that, I know the, uh, we've, there's been some discussion already about um, um, the uh, uh, 40B project off Copper Beach Road. Yeah. Uh, Copper Beach Drive, excuse me. Um, they've, made some presentations to staff. Um, we have presented to the Board of Selectmen in the comments and we submitted those comments to the state as part of the process. So what's the next step uh, and when do people, th when do you th expect, expect the residents to see uh, a more formal plan coming forward? So for the Copper Beach Drive one, that is, for people who aren't sure where that is, that's um, if you were standing at the Cancun's restaurant and looking at the signal towards the schools, or if you were standing at the MBTA station and watching the train depart, it's in between those two locations and it's along the railroad tracks. And uh, what we've got is a 40B, which for people who might not be familiar with that is when a developer can come to the community and say that I am exempt from your local zoning. I'd like to produce some affordable housing. About 25% of it will be affordable. Um, which means that they might make 80% of the average median income around Boston. So that might, in our area, be a family with a, a fireman, for, for example, sure. as, as the income. So this is one of those types of projects, and they do a, an eligibility application first to the state, and DHCD shakes out uh, some questions and answers. And on this one, there are questions about access and traffic because uh, both of those spots are... Um, familiar because there is a lot of use. Mm. And then um, once the state has finished their review, which should probably be in another month or so, they'll issue a letter. And the letter will either say that they're eligible and that there's a number of issues that should be addressed when they file, or that they're ineligible and that they have to read a file. Sure. So we don't know which way it will go. Okay. Um, and then once the filing is actually uh, brought into the ZBA, then the town would do what they normally do with one of these types of projects where there's a special permit and we would notify the abutters. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have uh, the opportunity for them to present to the planning board just to pre you know, preview that and give people the opportunity to speak and then the public hearing process is with the ZBA. Yeah, I was going to just mention maybe just uh, one of the distinct differences I think that uh, people who uh, maybe aw maybe aware anyways of how the how a, uh, a proposal a subdivision or a plan gets approved this is going to be a little bit different because it is uh, a 40b project um, it's not the planning board who gives their final approval uh, it's the zoning yeah. board yeah so. even though there might be a development in, in Kingston usually it's the planning board that does that work mm. um, but whenever there's a 40b they um, allow the ZBA to sort of entertain all of those different bodies of the town so that they are going through just one permit. And that allows them to more quickly move ahead. There are other ones, but uh, you know, they, they're looking at their wetlands regs from the state level. They're looking at uh, any subdivision waivers and subdivision control through the ZBA. And the ZBA is the Special Permit Granting Authority. And I just want to reemphasize, because I was talking with some residents in that area just yesterday out in the field, that... Um, it's not 100% affordable um, units in terms of the number of people who have that income level of 80% of the AMI. It's actually 25% of those units. Sure. But because it's a rental, the state says, hey, you know what? Even though 25% of those are affordable, 
uh, we're going to let the town count 100% of the units towards their um, what we call their uh, subsidized housing inventory, which is that magic number of 10% to allow the town to say, safe harbor, we want a little time out. Uh, we're, we're meeting our goal of 10% affordable units in mm -hmm. the entire town. So uh, I know it's, it's a preliminary uh, plan at this point and may need to be tweaked, but the number of units that they at least presented to us as a town recently uh, was how many? It's around 150, okay. give or take, and it's rental in three large uh, buildings that they're proposing, okay. so apartments. Lastly, uh, again, we the, the town pr provided some comments uh, about uh, you know the concerns, issues that we'd like the state to consider. Yeah. Um, you mentioned obviously one of the bigger ones is traffic. Yeah. Um, what were a couple of other other issues, just so people are aware of some of the things that um, that we as staff members um, made the board of selectmen aware when when presenting that letter. Well, a big concern that we have is that they're showing. 30 feet of fill for part of the road and three 10 foot high retaining walls stacked upon each other behind a residential home. We think that that's probably a problem. Um, another thing that we think is really important is that this does run right along the train tracks and for some reason the developer left the train tracks off of their plans. So we emphasize that they need to show um, the any kind of vibrations or any kind of sound impacts that might be happening have to be buffered and that they, there's uh, standard ways to measure those impacts and even orient buildings to avoid having um, problems come up. And when they cut those trees, they're gonna be impacting the residences along Copper Beach as well. Sure. So we're gonna want them to extend all the way out so that they mitigate properly. Great. Um, and again, just one last shameless plug. <laughs> um, because this will be heard in front of the zoning board, uh, as people may be aware, uh, the zoning board has five members Right now, there are no alternates to those members. Um, there have been, there's been a, a zoning uh, administrator appeal to the zoning board that uh, the, the zoning board was able to finally schedule in S September. They weren't able to finish that. They looked for some additional information. Uh, that uh, public meeting or public hearing is going to be continued uh, in mid-October, uh, partly because um, the, the person uh, appealing the decision in this case has the ability to have a full board um, to overturn the zoning administrator's decision. They need, they need four out of five votes. If you only have four people there, you need 100%. Right. Um, so, uh, so it's the, important. We need those volunteers. We need two more sure. alternates. So, so yeah. if you're concerned about what's happening with land use things in town, um, again, I'd urge you to consider... Um, being appointed to the zoning board. Uh, they meet typically a couple of times a month if there, if there are cases that need to be heard. Uh, there are some things that are coming up like this 40B potentially that will be a little bit more time consuming and, and probably a little bit more in depth than some of the things you might deal with. Um, but again, it, it's a real opportunity for, for, for volunteers to really um, direct the community so we have a better sense of what our future future how to, yeah. the housing needs are in the community and how we're going to how we're going to face those so um, and we're here as staff to help bring anyone up to speed if they're interested in volunteering we're here to provide information before the meetings after the meetings um, and we're happy to meet with people uh, to answer questions about the process but we'd really love to see a couple of alternates to, so that everyone on that uh, board can have a you know if they need to go see uh, their child's game or something like that they can miss a meeting or two and it's still okay you know, we just want to have that flexibility for all of the members that are on that board. Yeah. So if you have any questions, have any interest, um, you know, you can certainly reach out to either Valerie or Jason Silver, our community development director. Um, either one of those uh, uh, people would be happy to uh, either talk on the phone or sit down in person and explain, you know, what the responsibilities and what 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 your what uh, amount of time you're really looking to commit to. Um, so please consider that if you'd like and. Um, uh, they certainly would be very much appreciated by members of the zoning board and, and staff that supports that. Yeah. So moving forward, uh, next development that we've been having some conversations with internally, and I know the developer has been meeting with uh, a variety of different town departments, um, is the Sacred Heart High School property. Right. Um, that property uh, was put up for sale uh, sometime in the last year. Uh, we have a, uh, a developer who's, who has a purchase and sale agreement on that property. Um, we've met with, and I say we staff has met, uh, as a group, 
uh, as well as uh, individually with this potential developer. Uh, he's very, very well known, very well respected, I think, in the uh, housing fields. Uh, he's done a lot of different projects throughout Massachusetts. So that's exciting to have somebody yeah. with uh, the integrity and quality that, that he brings to the table. Uh, it will be a very complex subdivision. Um, or de our development, I'm not sure what it's going to be, right, I guess I should there. say. But uh, what, they've what they've indicated to staff at this point, and, and jump in where, you, where, you, where I'm missing some things, what they've indicated is I think they're looking at constructing um, an unknown number at this point of, of mixed types of housing. Yes. Uh, townhouses, one-story living for seniors, uh, maybe some smaller homes for uh, new families uh, mm -hmm. or new newlyweds so you're not having to buy the three starter or four bedrooms yeah. starter type homes yeah. um so it's a it's an interesting project uh, the the sacred heart high school building as well as the basketball court building i believe would both be be uh, torn down yes. um there's been discussion about whether or not the town wants to um either lease uh or take ownership of the field space that's there now uh, those discussions um, are very preliminary at this point, and, and those decisions have certainly haven't been made yet. But right. um, Well, I, they've been going to the Water Commission and the Sewer Commission because those are the limiting factors for them. Um, people out in that area of town don't have public water or mm -hmm. public sewer there, and so they need to um, weigh out their options in terms of how many units they might be able to do. And what uh, Thorndike Development has told us, uh, Mr. Geisinger has said to us that He's looking at a certain number of units, but it, uh, he's learning as he goes through the process that these limiting factors are going to um, affect their decisions, but they've decided to go ahead. Mm. So we'll hear from them soon, and um, we expect that they may be coming to us and asking for some sort of a zoning option at, at the uh, upcoming town meeting. Mm -hmm. So we're eager to hear from them. Yeah. So, it's, it's again, it's an ongoing project. He, he's been doing his due diligence, as you mentioned, by meeting with all town departments. Uh, I know he's also met with, I believe, uh, the Town of Plymouth Water and Sewer Commission as well because yeah. um, there is water and sewer infrastructure from Plymouth closer to that site than, than uh, where it is right now in Kingston. Um, I think Plymouth has some limitations with their water um, capabilities and their wastewater um, capacity, just like just like Kingston does. So, um, you know, we'll continue to work as a group of staff members to support him and provide him whatever information he needs and, and make sure that, that all of the uh, uh, zoning bylaws and, and whatever it is, uh, is we have to protect are, are, are done in a, in a very co uh, collaborative way. And uh, it should be a very interesting project moving forward, I think. Yeah, it's exciting to see what might could happen. It is. Um, Next, we have a, uh, a, a potential um, apartment complex uh, of some kind. Uh, you may know more than I. Um, on in, a, my, in, a, in the the name of the, of the property, Wapping Road. Wapping Road across from the ice cream cone. Yes, <laughs> that's how I think of it. Yes, um, it's a former junkyard that's been cleaned up, but uh, there's still a little bit of work to be done. So we're excited that the uh, developer is coming forward and again um, coming to the state through a 40 beat process which would again provide rental units for the town. Um, that's a good location in terms of being right on a public major street. And also um, they have, they'll be doing uh, just septic system there, but sure. um, that's a, to have that get more cleaned up is always good for the water supply. So that's a great thing. And uh, we also have um, had presentations made by Trammell Crow. Mm -hmm to the um, Water and Sewer Commission with respect to a possible 40B that might be out on the town line. Um, when you think about the intersection, when you're coming out of the mall and headed towards Plymouth. Towards the uh, intersection of Commerce Commerce Drive. and Cherry. Yeah. And so uh, out there, there's a little bit of land that uh, might be available for a 40B, and they've been talking um, to the different uh, water and sewer again for the same reasons. How much capacity does the town have? So we expect that one to come and get filed as well. Yeah. So again, you know, one of the challenges I think and concerns we have as as uh, town staff, to mm -hmm. your point, is um, you know capacity issues. I think the, the 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 most glaring right now are water and sewer. Right. Um, but also, depending on the types of de of development and and the anticipated number of children, there may be some impacts to the schools that will have to be considered as well. So. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we've looped the school department in on our conversations so they're aware of them and, and uh, can participate so they understand uh, if there's any type of uh, any type of issues with the services they they're having to provide, that they can be aware of those and, and provide comment to us uh, for the planning board or the zoning board to take into consideration, depending on which type of development it is. Right, and depending on timing, uh, we've been talking with the selectmen about the possibility of of reaching uh, very quickly, just because of the number of potential filings, a capacity that's called safe harbor mm -hmm. um, under 40B where uh, there's only so many units we'd have to consider as a town right this second. Right. And we might be able to say, let's slow this down a little bit uh, if we want to. So we're going to be talking about that at the upcoming selectmen's meeting, which will be a, a good conversation. We don't have to make a decision right. right that night, but it's something that we want to talk about as a community. And maybe what you, maybe you can just explain a little, a little more in depth what Safe Harbor means and, and what yeah. that, um, that uh, pause... Yeah, so that would that would happen. So kind of like these stormy seas. If you if you uh, we have all this development coming and we feel that pressure on capacity for water and sewer, especially, but also traffic, and the schools, um, they have what they call safe harbor based on the population of a town, or the number of affordable units that have been built in a town, which they keep track of, and um, how quickly those units are being built. So if there are quite a few before the town, the town can say we need a timeout. It can be six months, it can be a year, um, up to two years if we approve a large project. Mm -hmm. So it varies a little bit how we get there. But the idea is that we take a little recess and give ourselves time to think it through and, and adapt our policies and, and planning towards those. I think, it's, I think one thing that's important for people just to recognize is um, we can't choose which, which projects uh, we, we're willing to consider Correct. prior to uh, calling that time out with a safe harbor, it, it's it's chronological by uh, submission mm -hmm. from the developer. So you know we don't have any control over that. Uh, I'm sure the developers are very very aware of what I would suggest be their competition for 40B projects, and I'm yeah. sure they're moving as expeditiously as they can to get under the threshold um, of uh, being allowed to move forward with their their uh, proposed development before mm -hmm. we declare a safe harbor. And it could be that we end up calling safe harbor, but then phase some of these, Right. you know? So it could be a little bit of everything. Um, lastly, I guess, uh, at least that I'm aware of, and maybe we can get into a few other things. I know you've got a couple of other topics to talk about. Um, the MBTA zoning yeah. and where we stand and, and um, some of the directions that we're um, that we're working on to to make sure that um, if it is adopted, um, it's has as as uh, it's, it's it's works it's it's excuse my stumbling here, but it's as appropriate as it can be yeah. with the cult with it with the, the look and feel of the town. Yeah. So um, MBTA zoning. Not everyone has that on their radar, but. About a year ago, year and a half ago, there was a new bill passed by the legislature which said that if there are communities that the state defines as MBTA communities, meaning they have some sort of public transit related to MBTA, um, they're going to need to build some more housing and denser housing near those stops. So we have a commuter rail station here in mm -hmm. Kingston. There was some preliminary guidelines. We had some meetings uh, early on to provide public comment to DHCD about that. There were, I think they, they had hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of comments sure. that came back. Um, and so the newest uh, ish, issuance was in late August. And we're going through all, um, there's about 100 people on these mm. webinars every week where we're doing week after week of training on this new zoning and what they want us to do. But basically in Kingston, the, the uh, number for us is a, just over 800, 840 units, give or take, of unlimited bedroom count zoning by right. And 40% of those have to be within a half mile of the train station. And we've been telling the state that we have a lot of concerns about the ability to put that in at the train station. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the because other of, because of available land, and, yeah. and if in the land, some of the land that is Access. available, you know, there's there's right. there's some we issues. We have the wastewater treatment plant. We have the the transfer station. Mm -hmm. We have the school. We have the uh, leaching fields. We have the train station itself. Mm -hmm. We have um, some 
industrial development there. So it's very difficult for us to envision that being maybe family friendly, especially with the four commercial turbines that are right. there. So family friendly is a uh, part of the definition. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot of homework on what we can do there, but also where else in the town do we want to have that kind of density right. allowed by right? And what we're learning in these webinars, which is a relief, quite frankly, is that if you don't have the water and you don't have the sewer and you don't have the, the traffic capacity, it, um, you can say, yes, when we have this, you can build it. But until we have that, um, we, we can't, you know, build it. We can permit it, but you're going to have to wait. Sure. And the other thing that we're, we're um, finding out is that if we don't build it at the density that they prescribed the zoning could allow, we can still meet the requirements. As long as we have that zoning in place, we can allow much lesser density. Okay. In the, so that's good news. Uh, I am, I've met with the sewer commission, and I'll be meeting with the water uh, department next week to mm -hmm. kind of look carefully, because I think water is going to be a real concern no for the question. town on that. Um, and we'll see where that goes. Um, we're eager to do the right thing, but also have all the information available at our fingertips so that when we start talking about where we might put that, we've really given it some careful thought. And the state has, uh, at least at this point anyways, indicated that if, if uh, you know, these zoning areas aren't adopted by communities, then there's revenue sources and grant opportunities that we currently take advantage of that we would no longer be able to. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's in my mind, you know, that's part of the the, the uh, push and pull on whether or not to even adopt a, uh, a zoning bylaw for this. My concern is that uh, if too many communities don't adopt it, I think that the the number of revenue opportunities will continue to be removed from yeah. communities that uh, that don't adopt this. Agree. We're also looking into and have, frankly haven't spent a ton of time on since we've kind of thrown it out there to see if it's stuck to the wall is just not just asking the MBTA to, to shut down the MBTA's train station. By doing that, we wouldn't have to fall within that zoning requirement because we wouldn't, we wouldn't either be a host community or uh, an abutting community to a host community. So, yeah. Well, and, I, and to give some context to that, sure. the idea is that we're a mile as the crow flies from Plymouth's train station. And they're very eager to be a commuter rail mm. station, but they weren't. They didn't fall within the definitions uh, in the newer regulations. But um, I used to be the town planner in Plymouth, and I know that a lot of hard work has gone into protecting the um, the cordage area. Right. A lot of thought has gone into that, and there's a lot of historic homes and a lot of families that have been there for generations. Um, and the the way that this would work is that they have to put a very high level of, of over 2,000 units mm. around that train station there. So the idea is, is there a better way to work with these two train stations and the two towns being so close together and take this from a regional approach that would bring both of those train stations into consideration? And we have, you know, we have had a, a meeting with uh, some of the representatives from uh, the town of Plymouth, uh, mm -hmm. Repre Representative Lenatra, Senator Moran as well. So. Um, there's a number of different balls in the air right now, and, and we're trying to vet every one of them. Right, to and bring, explore every option. Yeah, to bring whatever we, we think is most appropriate uh, to the voters and, you know, the planning board, uh, board of selectmen and whatnot. So um, a lot going on in, as yeah. far as those, those potential projects go. And can I add a sure. little bit more that we're doing? Absolutely. <laughs> so we've had some of that public benefit money that the planning board has carefully um, negotiated with different developers mm -hmm. who've already been here. And, and to remind everyone, we've had some big challenges in the, in the town. We've had uh, the Amazon warehouse. Mm -hmm. We've had the um, Trammell Crow apartment building that's now um, finishing up construction. And so along with those conversations and some others, uh, the capacity on traffic has been a big issue. And I know that's been on top of your plate sure. um, th in the time that you've been here. And we've put aside some of that public benefit money to look at We've done a complete streets grant. Mm -hmm. We're about to do some intersection improvements for walkability on Wapping Road near the Cumberland Farms. Uh, we also have a study being done right now on the pavement so that we have a pavement management plan. Mm -hmm. And we're also working with another consultant to look at all of our traffic and all of our uh, intersection safety and, and speeds throughout the entire town 
to prepare a document that we can say, here's what we need to do in what order, and work more closely with the state in terms of MassDOT roads. Right. So we're excited to have that as well, so that we're looking at water, sewer, and traffic while talking to the schools and really giving this um, a well-rounded approach. And we're, we're really fortunate to have your leadership on bringing all of us on the same page in terms of looking at those questions. Well, we've got, so again, not to, not to put too much of a plug in, we've got a tremendous, tremendously talented department head group um, that are supported by tremendous admins, um, in my opinion anyways. And we're, we're trying to look at things a little bit longer term, to yes. your point, and uh, you know, to have um, documents that we can point to with that, that, uh, this, that we can work with the state on, as well as uh, the voters for, exactly. you know, here's how much money we think we need on an annual basis to maintain our roads. We have only been spending uh, Chapter 90 money um, primarily uh, mm -hmm. on, on roads and, and sidewalks, and frankly, I don't think it's enough money anymore, especially with the increase in costs that, that we're seeing, sadly, uh, in our uh, asphalt prices and, and yeah. things of that nature. So. We're going to work with, like you said, we're going to work with an engineering firm that's going to update our, our road conditions, and we're going to, you know, lay out a long-term plan for how we address, um, you know, the condition of our roads to make sure that they're at a level that uh, people expect them to be. Yeah, and the other good news that I want to quickly uh, sure. share with everyone is that we actually have started the design for Exit 20, uh, working with Duxbury, and uh, so through, and I want to give a shout out to our local delegation, including. Um, uh, Josh Cutler, who used to be one of our reps, and Kathy Lenatra and, and others who helped us get the, the uh, funding for that built into the, uh, the state uh, bond revenue program and also just helping us get this through. So we've got that contract going. We're working on design, and we hope mm. to have that built, a multi-million dollar project, in uh, two years or so. With very little town money. With almost no town money, which is great. So, anything else before we no, that's end this all fantastic the, all the news program? No, that's all for today. Yeah. Valerie, I want to thank you very much for being here. Always a, a tremendous wealth of knowledge. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, next month, we will be back with another, another guest. And uh, again, I can't urge people enough. If you want to get involved right now with how this community is going to continue to grow, um, there are fantastic opportunities, not just on the zoning board, but other boards as well. A, a complete list of those are on our town website. And I can't urge you enough to take, it, take that into consideration. So Come on over. <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, we appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day.